All right, my friends, welcome back to Anti-War Radio. Our next guest is Stu Bykofsky. He's a writer for the Philadelphia Daily News. I hope I got that right. Yeah, Philadelphia Daily News. Welcome to the show, Stu. Happy to be here. Uh, good to talk to you, sir. And, uh, well, as you already know, just from the name of the show, you and I are going to disagree, but uh, this isn't the Sean Hannity show, so let's you and I be friends. And, uh, and, and let's not... Uh, Getting into one of those arguments where we each begin each sentence with, uh, you believe this and you believe that, because I don't want it to be like that. I I have to say, Phil, uh, uh, Stu, pardon me, uh, I have a serious problem uh, with the sentiment expressed in your recent column, to save America, we need another 9-11. What's going on there? Well, what's going on, first of all, is the headline does not express what the text of the column does. The word need is wrong. Read the first uh, the first sentence of the column, if you would, Scott. So one your, month from know, your listeners know what we're talking about. Sure, sure. Uh, one month from the anniversary, I'm thinking another 9-11 would help America. Okay. Uh, help as opposed to need an attack. What that is, one man's opinion. It was my hypothesis. And the, what, what the column expressed was uh, remembering the unity that we felt as Americans after 9-11. I kind of yearned for that. I see we're terribly divided today, and I speculated on whether or not an attack would do that. At the close of the column, I acknowledge that the unity brought by such an attack sadly won't last forever. The first 9-11 proved that. So I'm acknowledging it is not a cure-all, and it was an idea I was throwing out there to underscore my belief that we're terribly fractured, and there was reaction to the column, which I published on Monday, in which I said I was wrong. An attack won't do it. We are so badly fractured. I don't think of anything that can do it. Oh, and and my apologies, because I'm just now seeing in the margin here that you wrote another column uh, following up, which I haven't read. So okay. my apologies for that. But, That's uh, okay. But here's the thing. Um, it seems to me that the reason we're so divided is because of all the things that our government was able to get away with by exploiting all that unity that we felt on September 11th. Wouldn't we be all better off if we could find unity around the Bill of Rights rather than around an aggressive foreign policy? Well, what I decided, my, my opinion in the column, was that the fracture that we see in America today flows mostly from Iraq, uh, the attack and the, the prosecution of the war that was botched by Bush. Uh, you can, well, I'll leave it at that, uh, that the, the war itself, because it has dri- dragged on for four years, because there is no victory in sight, because there are casualties every day, that is what has turned people against the war. Rather than the war, people being against the war itself, my illustration of that, that point of view, would be, the first Gulf War, which lasted a hundred hours of actual fighting where we had a declared attack. If there were, uh, there were people who, of course, were against that war too, but they were a very small minority. And as time passed, uh, that has receded into the distance. It is not a national, it is not open for national debate anymore because we won that war and we won it quickly. Well, but see, I, um, well, I'd agree with you that uh, the American people were all, were, you know, almost entirely happy with that war. But, I mean, okay. isn't the lesson of that first Gulf War that, no, we didn't win it? We, we got ourselves into another Vietnam situation where this thing began in January of 1991, and we're still bombing that place and well, never stopped. Uh, you know, you, you, uh, you're actually sounding like people from the right now who say we didn't win the war because we didn't finish it off, George uh, uh, H.W. Bush should have gone in and uh, taken it over right then and there. Well, of course, had that's we not done, what I said. Had we done that? Now, I don't make that case. I think that's wrong thinking. Well, but that's what the right I do, is too. I do, too, and that's, that's why I opposed the second Gulf War. Was, it was basically sold as finishing the job of, of George Bush Sr. And, of was, course, I'm sorry, Scott. It, it didn't finish the job. That, way. that may be the truth, as you see it. It was never sold that way. Well, it was sold as uh, weapons of mass destruction. 
well, in a way, honestly, that was how it was sold to the rubes. If you watched uh, Meet the Press, it was sold as regime change. It was sold as uh, this guy is no longer tolerable that he's there, and so we're going to go in and finish the job from last time. Uh, well, Saddam is a bad guy. I don't recall anyone saying we're going to finish the job from last time, but that's a minor point. Yeah, I mean, uh, what I'm te- wh- the point I'm making is not that they should have, quote-unquote, finished the job back in 1991. The point that I'm making is that the war in 1991 n- never ended. It still hasn't ended. This is still the same war. And um, it wasn't declared. You said that was a declared war, I think. Uh, it was not a declared war. It was not in defense of America or even American interests. It was... Oh, are you talking about the current Iraq war? No, I'm talking about the first one that got us into this mess in 1991 <laughs> that the American people still love so much. I believe the first one was, was authorized by the United Nations. Yeah. Well, that's not a declaration of war from the United States Congress as mandated uh, by the Constitution. Uh, well, that's and it was right. Not, and it was, was certainly not in defense of, of America. When was the last time we had one of those? I don't even think Korea was. Uh, Korea no, it was, was 1941. War, it was action, right? 1941 was the last time that's, Congress declared that, war. That's right. We don't do that anymore. Yeah, well, we ought to. If we're going to have a war, I think the responsibility ought to be on the lawmakers. That's what Madison and them thought I, when they wrote the Constitution, too. I agree with you. But so now it, let, we're, we're, we're too far off the, off the point here. Um, well, let's get, let's get to the second Iraq war. You say that the problem that the American people have is the mismanagement of it rather than the war itself. Uh, I would submit to you, sir, that uh, there was no proper way to manage it. Uh, whether they made a giant mistake firing the Iraqi army and so forth is debatable, although I think if they would tried to keep the Baathists uh, in power and the Iraqi army, they'd have had to start the war all over again against the Shiites, who were not going to tolerate that. That's mm-hmm. why they fired them, is because the Ayatollah Sistani insisted on it. Yep. And... Uh, and so there was no right way to wage this aggressive war to to uh, somehow uh, guarantee a, a new form of government and impose it on the people of that country. There was no right way to do that. And if the American people, uh, and it is a minority according to the polls, uh, the latest ones I've read, um, if, if, if those Americans think that the war was still right but it was just waged wrong, well, that's still they're just still just mistaken. And what we're talking about is America was attacked by a stateless band of guerrilla fighters left over from the war against the Russians that America supported. They were basically out of work. Uh, the king of Saudi Arabia wouldn't hire them to oust Saddam from Kuwait, hired us to do it instead. Some of them went and fought in Bosnia for Bill Clinton in the 1990s and uh, in Kosovo uh, in, in 1999 there at the end of the last century. And they decided that they couldn't overthrow their local governments they wanted to overthrow until they got rid of us first. So they would come and knock down our towers and get us to overreact and invade their land where they could shoot our guys and drain our treasury until our empire was so bankrupt they could force us out. And now it seems to me like uh, George Bush is doing, and his this entire policy has been exactly what Osama bin Laden wants, and it seems to me that it's also the kind of thing that makes it much more likely that we'll have that next September 11th, when really what we're talking about is a war that could have been over in six months if it had been targeted against the actual Mujahideen warriors that knocked those towers down, instead well, of the Baathists who were start, number three on their list. Was, wasn't that what we were doing in Afghanistan? Well, actually, no. In Afghanistan, they went and they waged war against the Taliban, and they let al-Qaeda escape. Well, but weren't we after al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, and wasn't well, that where they were? That is where they were, okay. but they really assumed, and Tommy Franks even said, Osama bin Laden is not our target. We're here for regime change against the Taliban, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure that there were some who would have liked to uh, get them at Tora Bora, and I'm not saying that you know it was necessarily on purpose, but bin Laden and uh, his top guys got away, and now we're stuck overthrowing the Taliban and trying to install uh, Hamid, Lando Calrissi, and Karzai in power there uh, with his cape and his furry hat and the rest of it. And, um, and what do we have? A resurgent Taliban, a resurgent al-Qaeda, stronger than ever according to the latest national intelligence estimate. And... It seems to me like this unity that you talk about, I mean, I kind of like the spirit of, hey, uh, you know, we can all get along and not have to fight among each other all the time and what have you. But if that unity is to be exploited by our government to wage war on innocent people to make our terrorism problem so much worse, then what's the good of it? Wouldn't Scott, we did, be did better I, off as individualists? Did, uh, did I hear, uh, were you critical of the United States intervention in Bosnia under Bill Clinton? 
Yes, that war was fought okay. basically for the Mujahideen. I mean, it, it, bin Laden's guys were were used as shock troops in that war. Okay, but it wasn't to save Muslims who were being rounded up and exterminated. Uh, no, I don't think it was. Wow. I mean, okay. particularly when you're talking about the Kosovo War. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, uh, no, the Kosovo War, there were no mass graves. The FBI left after two weeks. They found a total of 3,000 bodies. Uh, all of them were of uh, fighting age men. There were no men, women, and children rounded up and shot and dumped in mass graves. The, the Clinton administration promised us hundreds of thousands of bodies, and they never found them any better than they found Saddam Hussein's nuclear weapons program. They didn't exist. It was a lie. And, in fact, it was Hillary Clinton, as we were just discussing in the last half hour here on the show. It was Hillary Clinton, and she's bragged about this publicly, who called Bill Clinton and uh, basically browbeat him into going ahead and starting the bombing based on that lie. There was no genocide in Kosovo. There was, and there were no concentration camps with starving Muslims. Those pictures were all, photo, were all faked. Uh, well, there was, I saw them, Scott. There, were, there was footage of Kosovar refugees from after the bombing began uh, fleeing to Albania. I saw those, that footage on CNN, too. But I'm telling you, sir, do the Google search. There were no mass graves. They found a total of like 3,000 bodies, total. And they weren't civilians. There were no mass graves. They promised us 100,000 bodies from that war that, they were, that had already been killed. That was the genocide they were stopping. And they used the Mujahideen. In fact, Brendan O'Neill has written all about this, how Bill Clinton really strengthened al-Qaeda and, and really internationalized the modern jihadist movement by backing them in Kosovo. And it did not serve American interests one bit whatsoever. Scott, I'm glad to hear that you're, uh, you're uh, criticizing Democrats as well as Republicans on the basis of information. Yeah, I mean, I'm a partisan toward freedom. I mean, what I want, I want to live in a free society. And so uh, whichever administration is working against my liberty, they're the, my, the target of my criticism. Mm-hmm. And, and again, let's get back to the original point here. Americans got along a lot better in the, in the days and weeks and months after September 11th. People stopped calling 911 on each other so much. People stopped fist fighting in bars so much. And, and uh, you know, the, the level of the tragedy got to us in a way. Everybody put a America United and all that on the car. But yeah. my fundamental question to you is, is that really a good thing? Wouldn't we have been better off if 90% of the American people had said, wait a minute, George Bush and Dick Cheney are the same people they were on September 10th, and they shouldn't be trusted with any more power or authority than we would have trusted them with on September 10th. And no, not everything has changed. The Bill of Rights has not changed. The constitutional separation of powers has not changed. And the fact that it is immoral to wage aggressive war against countries who have never attacked us has not changed. Scott, do you remember that uh, the administration and CIA and FBI were criticized for failure to connect the dots? Absolutely. Okay. What I see now is that the left, by and large, will not give the administration the ability to connect the dots by uh, lawful, lawful eavesdropping. I'm against Oh, unlawful. geez, the Democrats just passed it last week. The president can tap anybody wants, and the paper says today uh, that uh, George Bush is now telling the courts that they may not even review any lawsuits about warrantless wiretapping because it would violate the state's secrets privilege oh, he, that was he, made he, up by he, the courts in he, the first place. He, he was given the authority after he had usurped the authority. You're right. And, uh, right, and uh, I am certainly not for that. But uh, the, Now, why did the Democrats give him the authority? because they don't want to be accused after the next attack. And, Scott, you know in your heart we will be attacked again. As long as we they continue do. this foreign policy, I, we, I absolutely believe will, that that's our true. Our foreign policy at this moment has nothing to do with it. We will be attacked again. There are already al-Qaeda cells in this country. Oh, you come not, on. You don't want to believe it? Fine. But, gee, somebody attacked the World Trade Center in 1993 and was convicted of the crime. Yeah, and uh, now that wasn't imagined, was it? And you're telling if me you don't want to believe those guys that are still out on the loose. There are cells in this country. You're free not to believe it. I choose to believe it, and I I would encourage our government to do something to protect us against it. Well, you know, I'm I'm happy with people believing whatever they want. What I'd like to see is some evidence. I mean, what I've seen is the director of the FBI has test- convictions. I've seen, I've seen the director of the FBI testifying under oath before the United States Senate that they have no evidence whatsoever of any current al-Qaeda cells inside the continental United States whatsoever. 
And you believe everything he tells you? Well, I believe him when he says we have no evidence. We're looking, but we can't find any. I believe that. Look, the uh, the AP today is carrying a story about uh, citizens banding together uh, uh, into. Well, I'll I'll tell you to look it up. You can read it for your readers, uh, your listeners. I don't want to do it over the phone. A uh, story uh, by Tom Hayes on the Associated Press about uh, groups that believe that are joining together and being radicalized uh, to air their grievances through terrorism. Uh, as I said, we've already had a conviction. There, there were others. Uh, I, I, there was, well, it was a conviction in Detroit. We have people well, who are going on trial. I'm really glad that you mentioned this. We have people who are going on trial for a supposed attack on uh, Kennedy Airport. Now, I'm not saying they're guilty, and I'm not saying the plot is actual. Let's have the trial and see what happens. Right. Well, well let me stop you there. First of all, I never denied that uh, Ramzi Youssef and what became the Al-Qaeda movement were responsible for September 11, or uh, for the first World Trade Center bombing uh-huh. or, or any of those attacks through the 90s. Uh, I never denied any of that. So let's just get that straight. And secondly, you cite the Detroit case there. You know that they only got convictions on two out of the four, and then the judge turned around and let the two convicted go free because the prosecutor and the uh, guys from the State Department were being indicted for perjury and suborning perjury perjury and withholding evidence from the defense that they were convicted on the basis of thin air and the judge overturned their convictions and the Justice Department is now prosecuting the federal prosecutor who persecuted them. And so, again, uh, I'm not denying there's such a thing as al-Qaeda or that there's a threat to this country. Let's not go cite a bunch of bogus make-believe terrorism cases that the FBI has conjured out of thin air to support our case now, Stu. There is a real ther- uh, terrorist threat to this country. And the fact of the matter is you talk about these guys being radicalized. They're not being radicalized by a speech on some audio tape. They're being radicalized by watching the American military occupy their holy land and killing people who look and believe like them. That's why they're being radicalized. That's why they were being radicalized in the 1990s. Uh, you mentioned Ramsey Youssef and the first World Trade Center bombing. Yep. Have you ever read his rant to the judge upon his conviction when he gave his statement to the court? This is all about American foreign policy. It's always been about American foreign policy. And if they attacked us because we're occupying their holy land and putting sanctions on them and bombing them, well, then occupying their holy land and putting sanctions on them and bombing them more is not going to solve the problem. See, that's going to make the problem worse. Again, we start started off on September 12th at war against a stateless band of Mujahideen warriors who didn't control so much as a county on earth. You know, they were kind of an adjunct alliance with the Taliban, but they weren't the, even the government of Afghanistan. They were nothing. They were a band of pirates. And now not, we no, act I, like I they're the Soviet speech, Union. But uh, I told your producer I have 15 minutes for the interview. I've done 15 minutes. All right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it was civil. And it was nice talking to you, but I've got to get back to work. Okay, well, uh, I'd like to give you a chance to go ahead and answer that last bit if uh, if you'd like. I have a real job to do here, Scott, (laughs) and uh, I've given you actually more time than most interviewers, which want to do it in five or seven, but I really do have to get back to work. I appreciate talking to you, and I appreciate your point of view. All right, thanks uh, very much. Everybody, uh, Stu Bykofsky from uh, the Philadelphia Daily News.